I'm uh, Mamirat Simbazafi. I've been working uh, on uh, Ethereum since uh, two years ago, and uh, first uh, on Ethereum 1 and now Ethereum 2. And I'm uh, part of uh, Status, uh, the Nimbus team. So most of you know Status as uh, for three things, uh, the Messenger, the web free browser, uh, and also the browser, and uh, the wallet on mobile. But we are also involving uh, in core infrastructure as we eat uh, new challenges within the Ethereum uh, ecosystem. So the main one I will be talking uh, today is Ephraim 2. So at first, uh, for this talk, I had a big plan, secret plan, to come like Steve Jobs with uh, the new iPhone and show you uh, Ephraim 2 on Raspberry Pi. There is another one behind. But this was revealed uh, one month ago during the interrupt in Canada, and uh, all the Twitter uh, sphere was uh, all over the place with uh, this, plus what happened at the interrupt. So instead of talking about uh, that, I want to take a step back and explain um, why this is important for Ethereum, for blockchain, and also for society. So the real program today is why running on a Pi is significant, some experiments and outcomes, future and unknowns. So the main focus will be on sustainability and energy consumption, which, one, which was uh, one of the main critic of blockchain and especially proof of work. So without further ado, um, if you were uh, this morning at the introduction talk by Vitalik, we talked about Byzantine fault tolerance and this paper from uh, Lamport in 1982, which presented the Byzantine general problem, which was about uh, how to reach consensus between, uh, like, if you all are generals of an army, you have to attack a city, and maybe you have to communicate so that not half of you uh, attack the city while half of the other retreat, and you come to a strong decision despite uh, spies, maybe messenger dying or fleeing. And one of the main advancements of Bitcoin was using proof of costly resources, work, uh, to help solve this, um, this general problem. So here, uh, you have, uh, I suppose, one of the first mail that introduced uh, Satoshi's work uh, with an example of uh, attacking, um, I don't know, maybe a company uh, through and uh, trying to crack the crypto uh, hashes um, and uh, concerting many attackers for that. The main point is that you need a lot of compute, so a lot of energy to do that. And to introduce more context, I want to talk about externalities and also sustainability. So externality is uh, an economic term that explain, um, that tells you uh, it's a cost or a benefit that affects a party who did not choose to incur that cost or benefit. So to give you a concrete example, suppose uh, there is a factory somewhere that pumps in uh, clean water and uh, exhausts dirty water downstream. People downstream didn't choose to have dirty water and they are not paid uh, to clean it. So this is a negative externality. On the other hand, a positive externality would be the same factory is building a road uh, where there were none before and all the villages and the city uh, along those roads benefit from much better transportation. So this is a positive externality. And sustainability, I guess, um, now everyone is familiar with the term. So the idea is that it's meeting the need of the present without compromising the ability of future generation to meet their needs. How does that play in Ethereum? So the public um, opinion is that uh, a lot of uh, the proof of work is a waste of energy. And that's an issue. There is this uh, EU blockchain observatory report uh, that was sent to the European Commission that said that uh, proof of work 
uh, consumes as much energy per day as the country of Singapore. It's not shown in the slide, but um, they said that there are lots of work in progress to improve that, and that thankfully the blockchain community is aware of the energy consumption and wants to tackle that. Another um, paper was in uh, the magazine Nature, and that said that uh, blockchain may, might contribute um, to global warming by two degrees Celsius. Uh, the paper is, uh, the code behind the paper is actually public, which is a very good thing. And if you want, uh, you can check out how they um, arrive to those estimates. You can also do your own. You can criticize it, put a PR or an issue. But I'm not here to talk about if it's two degree or 1.5 or maybe one or maybe three. I want it to be zero or maybe even negative like uh, if we have more efficient carbon market with the blockchain. Another negative externality is the space used. So this is an image of uh, Iceland, a US Air Force base that was completely transformed into a Bitcoin farm. And uh, I guess space today is at a premium with many countries like Japan who are struggling to get space either for food or for people. So, just to not be always negative, there are also positive externalities in uh, the blockchain space. So we have all these permissionless, trustless, decentralized, transparent and censorship resistant that everyone knows. But also, who heard about formal verification before hearing about blockchain here? Oh, there's one. <laughs> Well, blockchain is also driving all the innovation uh, in formal verification for software. Formal verification has been used by Intel, for example, for the past 20 years for hardware, but this is very new, and uh, thanks to blockchain, that formal verification is used for software, and there are others like game theory, uh, cryptography, that are being driven by blockchain. So now, let's go back to Ethereum 2. Ethereum 2, we change the proof of work, the wasteful algorithm, like the public may want to call it, to Ether itself. So now we can run it on that, something that can fit into my hand. We go from a big data center to this small thing. I've been running tests uh, in the past months on a Raspberry Pi 4. So uh, this one is Raspberry Pi 3, and the Raspberry Pi 4 was uh, out in uh, June, I think, a bit more powerful. Uh, two gigabytes of RAM. I use the default distribution so that people can reproduce it. And uh, Nimbus, the Ethereum 2 client called Nimbicon Chain. The configuration I used was called Minimal. This is what we used for Interop. Uh, we also have a mainnet one. I use minimal because, uh, unfortunately, we're not yet at the stage. We're missing a bit of extra step uh, to get to mainnet per, uh, performance. But I did try to make it uh, harder than minimal. So instead of interrupt, which was using 16 validators, I used 192, which means 992 times 32 if staked on this, uh, 64 shards, uh, eight slots per epoch. So one thing is that you might think that minimal is really a dumbed down version, but um, an epoch, so if you're not aware of the Ethereum 2 terminology, a slot is six seconds, it's uh, how fast we create new block uh, on the blockchain, and an epoch is um, a group of uh, blocks, a group of slots that make sense together, and we will have special processing after each epoch. And so that brings each epoch to 48 seconds instead of six minutes and so. And when I say epoch processing is costly, this is a list of what we do. Justification, finalization, so this means making sure that the blockchain cannot go back in time. Crosslinks, rewards and penalties, slashing validators, uh, inducing no, new validators, removing uh, those that are bad, and updating balances. 
Also, what I wanted to do was giving you very precise power consumption figures. Uh, and it happened that I had an issue, electrical issue at home uh, a week ago, so I bought this uh, fancy equipment, but I couldn't use it because I needed a cable with a different uh, electricity in and different electricity out, so I'm sorry. Now, for the actual demo. Uh, this is uh, the output live from uh, the Raspberry Pi that is behind you. And it showed you, it has been running for uh, 40 minutes now. And it showed you that first it didn't crash. And it's also running. And you have the output of three nodes. So it's a bit uh, fast. And this was a video backup uh, that I used just in case the live demo didn't work. Now, some key figures about running uh, Ethereum and Nimbus on a Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi maximum power consumption power draw is 7.6 watt. To give you an idea uh, for a typical laptop, uh, nowadays it's about uh, 30 watt. So it's uh, four to five times uh, less power consumed. And also a Raspberry Pi is about 10 times slower than an entry level CPU for uh, a desktop. So this means that uh, and it runs, uh, Ethereum 2 runs perfectly on uh, this kind of CPU. So if we can get two, three times more performance, we will be okay for mainnet. And also, uh, if people were worrying because they have 10,000 ETH to stake and they didn't know what kind of hardware they needed, well, uh, it's easy. So in summary, outcomes of those experiments. It runs, even unoptimized on a representative workload. You don't need a power plant in your backyard uh, just to ensure that you always have electricity and you don't black out uh, the whole uh, district. And we also have clear targets because uh, as Danny said uh, this morning, the main uh, blocker and most of the time is spent on cryptography. And the cryptography that we use on Ethereum 2 is very young. It was developed uh, by uh, Dan Bonnet at Stanford. But there is no either hardware or software optimization yet. And everyone, all the Ethereum 2 team, uh, currently have uh, an optimized and very young library. But as the ecosystem matures, it will get much better. Also, there is an effort to standardize across many blockchain like Ethereum, Zcash, Filecoin, Algorand, Definity, Chia Network, and I guess one or two other I forget. So there is an incentive across all blockchain to collaborate and get something really strong. The bad. So as I said, we can run minimal, we cannot run mainnet. And well, uh, processing takes over six seconds, maybe 10 or something we need to get twice faster. The ugly. I'm sorry, but if you wanted to hit your home in the winter, you will not be able to do it with proof of stake. So you will have to stay with Bitcoin or something else. Now, um, some ideas I have for the future to optimize this. Uh, so Raspberry Pi uh, default distribution is run in 32-bit mode, but cryptography in 64-bit is much faster. We had no multi-threading yet. Uh, even though this has four cores, we only used one. And as I said before, uh, we have no optimized crypto library uh, like Bitcoin has for uh, the curve called SecP256K1. Um, also at Nimbus, even though we are uh, one of the team targeting low power devices, there is another team, uh, Lodestar, who is trying to run uh, the Ethereum 2 on um, the browser, uh, on Chrome or Firefox. So they also have uh, huge challenges ahead. So it's uh, kind of a team effort. Uh, also, what's coming next? Raspberry Pi 5. So maybe it's twice faster, and we can sit uh, and do nothing. Uh, and for use cases for people, I don't expect actually to, for people to run that on a Raspberry Pi. Maybe they will rent an instance like they rent WordPress uh, today and uh, people will be able to just uh, 
launch some kind of OS with Ethereum installed and everything will be done for them and the, the consumption, the CPU that will be rented will be just powerful enough to run Ethereum. So, regarding the unknowns for uh, Ethereum 2 performance uh, in the future, as I said, verifying validators' attestation is quite costly. This is cryptography. It's uh, about 30 to 50% of the time spent in that. Um, if you read Prismatic Lab news um, from uh, a week ago, apparently they spent 99% of the time on BLS signature, and now it's only 20%. So we can uh, get uh, lots of improvement. Uh, another issue is uh, when we scale to 100,000 validators, we have an aggregation protocol still in research. Uh, we have no need to connect to every peer. Uh, so a lot of optimization there as well. So for me, the big unknowns are phase one and phase two, the execution layer, which is equivalent to uh, EVM and what uh, Solidity compiles to. Uh, I don't know how heavy it will be. So key takeaways after this talk. There are a couple of teams that have a vested interest to make Ethereum 2 as efficient as possible. Also, it will be a significant upgrade in terms of carbon footprint, so no one will be able to say anymore blockchain is wasting energy, even though we, we know that it's used for securing uh, censorship resistance, permissionless, and stuff. The consensus layer is quite solid. We need only just a focused effort. And the unknowns that I talked about, signature aggregation, phase one, and phase two. Thank you very much. <laughs>